90th Hollywood, USA, in one of the pavilions, a low-budget movie about vampires is being filmed, where Jake Scully plays the main role. The film team has trouble concentrating during the coffin scene because Jake suffers from claustrophobia and thus slows down the entire set. The director suggests that Jake take a break and go home early today, and they will continue tomorrow. Unsure of himself, Jake gets into the car and arrives at the house of his girlfriend Carol with whom he has a long-term serious relationship. She wasn't expecting Jake so early today, so he catches Carol in the middle of cheating, riding another man. Devastated, Jake goes to a bar where he drinks a lot of whiskey, interrupting on alcohol abstinence, and in the evening he checks into an inexpensive hotel, since he does not have his own place to live. In the morning he arrives at the studio to audition for a new role. Jake meets with a friend and tells him that he has serious housing problems. A friend introduces Jake to one of the actors, Sam Bouchard. At the audition, Jake plays the role of a depressed man, in whom the fear of being an outcast has lived since childhood, because his older brothers once pinned him to the wall and bullied him in every possible way. Sam watches all this and admires Jake's skill, and then they go to the bar together. When Sam finds out that Jake is is having housing problems. He says it's good luck. Sam is looking after his friend's apartment, but today, as luck would have it, he urgently needs to fly out of town. So Sam invites Jake to live in a friend's apartment for five weeks until the owner returns. At night, Sam takes Jake to a spacious apartment on one of the Hollywood Hills. In addition to the sauna and jacuzzi, it has its own bar table, and Jake persuades Sam to have another glass before leaving. Sam is late for his plane, but agrees to stay 15 minutes more to show Jake the main advantage of the apartment. Sam says that while he lived here, he looked through a telescope at night, and one day, in one of the neighboring houses, he saw a beautiful girl dancing by the window in her underwear. She repeats this every night, at the same time. Jake thinks he is being played, but still looks through the telescope and suddenly notices a stranger girl dancing, and doing it very elegantly and uniquely. After seeing Sam off, Jake watches the stranger, and later notices a man who enters her house and wants to take something from the safe. The girl tries to interfere, so the man slaps her and leaves. In the morning, Jake learns from his agent that he was fired due to a delay in the filming process. He arrives at the studio to settle differences with the director, but it is too late and filming continues on the set with a new actor. The next night, Jake watches the girl again and notices a strange man on a nearby roof doing the same thing. In addition to the facial features characteristic of a native Indian, Jake sees the man's predatory gaze and begins to worry about the girl. The next day, Jake drives out of the house and sees farmers whose cargo has fallen out of their car in the middle of the road. While the men remove the obstacle, Jake stops the car and looks around when he suddenly sees a white Mercedes and its driver, a beautiful girl, very similar to his dancing one. Jake realizes that she has moved out of the very house he watches at night, and then he makes an important deductive conclusion. This is the same girl. Jake notices the girl is being followed by a man who looks very much like the Indian. Worried about the girl, Jake decides to secretly accompany her so that nothing bad happens to her. The girl arrives at the shopping center, and Jake gets into the elevator with her when suddenly they encounter an Indian on the floor above. He looks so ugly, he should be arrested for it. However, the Indian quickly disappears from sight, noticing Jake next to the girl. Later, in a store, the girl buys beautiful underwear and puts it on immediately, and then makes an appointment with someone on the phone. Jake keeps an eye on her, and when he manages to get closer, he even overhears that, apparently, she is arranging a date with her lover. Leaving the mall, she throws her old, possibly dirty panties into the trash can and drives off. Then Jake quietly puts the find in his pocket perhaps to sniff it later, and continues to ride behind her. A girl comes to the coast, but the man she came to is not at home. Suddenly an Indian appears, snatches her purse and runs away, so Jake rushes after him. The Indian runs into a narrow tunnel, and Jake cannot continue the chase due to his claustrophobia, so the robber laughs, takes something from his bag, and runs away. Jake crawls with difficulty to the bag and returns it to the girl, who has already come running here. Her name is Gloria Revel, and she doesn't understand why two men are pursuing her at once today. She takes Jake out of the tunnel and he regains the strength to see how beautiful Gloria is, as she questions whether her dastardly husband, Alexander Revel, 
has hired the stalker. Jake is overcome with passion and kisses Gloria. She reciprocates because the meeting with her lover never took place and the playful mood has not gone away. But when her clothes begin to fall off in the middle of the street, Gloria decides to stop. In the evening, Jake finds out Gloria's phone number and wants to call her, so he rehearses his speech in advance, and closer to night he begins to look through the telescope. Suddenly, Jake notices an Indian who has already managed to break into Gloria's house and steals valuables from the safe. Jake calls her to warn her of danger, but the agile Indian attacks faster and begins to strangle Gloria. When Jake reaches her house and gets inside, Gloria is already dead and the Indian has disappeared. Jake calls the police, and for Detective Jim he becomes not only the only witness, but also a suspect. Jim finds inconsistencies in Jake's story, and his attraction to voyeurism quickly becomes known to the detective. Jake spied on Gloria, then chased her around the city, and at the moment the Indian appeared, he did not consider it important to immediately call the police. Why did he run to save the victim personally? And in general, why does Jake have women's underwear in his pocket? All this gives the detective reason to doubt the existence of the Indian. Gloria Revel was very rich, and when girls like her die, Jim usually suspects their husbands first. Due to the lack of direct evidence, he releases Jake, who knows nothing about Alexander Revel. Jim advises the only witness to reconsider his preferences because according to the detective, Gloria's death will remain on Jake's conscience due to his carelessness and lust. Returning home, Jake is watching adult films when he suddenly discovers an actress dancing exactly like the late Gloria. Wanting to restore justice and find the killer, Jake arrives at one of the Hollywood pavilions, where, under the guise of a producer, he meets the same actress. Holly. Jake spends time with her, promises better contracts and high fees. Holly wants to work with him, so in the evening she comes to Jake's house, where he shows Holly Gloria's house through a telescope. Jake asks if Holly is familiar with this place, and she admits that recently a stranger sent her money, and asked her to dance by the window for two nights without showing her face. Holly have never met with the customer and considered a big sum to be easy money, so she agreed. Jake admits that he is not a producer and someone framed him, making him the only witness to the murder. Holly does not think that this problem concerns her in any way and is about to leave, when suddenly Sam calls Jake and says that he is returning to Hollywood tomorrow. Jake lets Holly listen to Sam's voice, and she confirms that it is the voice of the client. Jake offers to go to the police, but Holly refuses and leaves to catch a taxi. Jake begins to understand that he was specially chosen and settled in this house by Gloria's husband, Alexander Revel, introducing himself as Sam. He wanted to get a witness to the crime that Gloria was killed by an Indian whom Alexander himself hired. Jake tells Jim all this, and the detective suggests to come to the police station. Meanwhile, Holly gets into a stranger's car and rides home through a traffic jam caused by an accident. Jake gets into the car and goes to the police station, but on the way out he gets into the same traffic jam, where he notices Holly, who is sitting in one of the front cars. Suddenly, the driver stuns her and accelerates sharply, so Jake gives chase, pursuing the kidnapper, sneaking into one of the closed areas. Areas. Jake sees someone digging a deep hole, on the edge of which Holly lies unconscious. Jake hides behind the kidnapper's car, and then when the kidnapper disappears, Jake runs up to the hole, trying to help Holly. Suddenly an Indian appears from the hole and throws Jake down. During the fight, Jake grabs the Indian by the face, tears off his mask and sees his new friend Sam. The guy who kindly provided him with an apartment, Gloria's husband, Alexander Revel, pretended to be Sam put Jake in a rented apartment so that he could witness his wife being killed by an Indian robber, whom Alexander disguised himself as. At the bottom of the pit, Jake becomes claustrophobic and completely immobilized, so Alexander laughs and begins burying both witnesses. Jake remembers his conversation with the director, becomes angry, and the fear of death and the rush of adrenaline strengthens his resistance. He grabs a shovel and rises from the grave. Suddenly a dog jumps out of the car and runs towards the owner to attack Jake, but he deftly dodges. The dog jumps on Alexander and they both fall off the cliff into the water. Jake overcomes his fear of enclosed spaces and the next day returns to the studio where he successfully continues his acting career. Thank you for watching.
Now I'm looking for your favorite genre, so if you like the retelling of the erotic detective thriller Body Double, please write about it in the comments. This will help me select similar films for future retellings.